Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meat Hook Jim here, along with Donnie Hoover. Hey, everybody. What's happening? And John Orlando. Hey, everyone. How's it going out there? And on this episode of Wrestle Horror Podcast, we've got our guest, Robbie Superstar the show. Robbie, how are you? Wow, you butchered that. Yes, I <laughs> uh, did. The show, Robbie <laughs> Superstar. Get it right, Jabroni. <laughs> I butchered it. That's my job. How are you, man? That's all right. I'll let it slide just for this podcast. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Robbie, welcome, welcome to Russell Horror. Uh, are, you, are you a horror fan at all? Um, you know what? I actually was not a big horror fan. However, my wife has gotten me into horror movies and stuff like that. So I've gradually become a fan since I've known her for the past three years, three and a half years. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, we've seen uh, you and your wife on uh, social media lately. Um, mm -hmm. So what kind of horror has she gotten you into? Is it... Uh, is it, is it mainstream, kind of off the side, what? Uh, kind of a little bit of both. Some, sometimes we try to find obscure horror movies, um, some funny horror movies, like uh, What They Do in the Shadows, that one comes to mind. Uh, the one with, like, the parody of the vampires and stuff, we thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, that's a good one. You know, and then, you know, the, the Freddies and the Jasons and the Michael Myers, and then... I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan, and they uh, implement a lot of horror characters in their games, too. So I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of that. All right. <clears throat> excellent. Excellent. Donnie, uh, any questions for Robbie? Uh, yeah, basically just we want to let people know uh, who you are and, and where you came from. We know, you know, on our end, you've been in the – <laughs> there you go. Nice. He's got I got his own Yeti. <laughs> yeah, know who I am. That's right. Personal that Yeti is, cup. Is that more one of a kind merchandise that you have? <laughs> yes, it is. I got it as a groomsman gift, actually. Really? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Best man gift, actually. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, every set, you know, everybody, you know, knows it. That knows you knows you've been around the business for a while and. And stuff like that but for the people that don't know just you know give us a little info background on you and how you got started in wrestling well uh i haven't had too many monikers um sorry my uh my phone flashed there for a second um i haven't had too many different monikers other than robbie star um i've had robbie superstar and the show robbie star um but i've been around the business i'm in my what i 2004 so i'm in my 15th year uh I, I started training at big guns pro wrestling academy down in Coshocton, ohio um stayed with ocw uh throughout the tenure of my career um got in you know joined up with new ohio wrestling with you i've wrestled for many different promotions um different states uh, you know wrestled you know quite a few different names and stuff like that not that that's a big deal but it is to some people um it, it holds a special place in my heart because uh, when it comes down to it we're all fans and uh growing up watching those guys uh it's it's like a dream come true to get to interact with them and be with them and uh have matches with them or just you know be in the locker room with them or all that good stuff <clears throat> robbie can you refresh my memory because we've known each other a very very long time yes um how did you find Jeff's school? Because <laughs> I, I really can't remember. I was thinking <laughs> yesterday, and I'm like, I remember meeting you, but I'm like, I have no idea. I don't remember the story of how he got there. It was actually, I can't, I can't think of her name right now. Oh, Brandy. Do you remember her? Oh, Rice, yes. Rice yes. Valley. Yeah, I do. We, uh, it was really weird because, you know, as a lot of us did, uh, we were, my friends and I, we were, uh, you know, wrestling in the backyard on trampoline and stuff like that. And I was a big fan and just growing up and probably did it a little bit, you know, longer than I should. I was probably in my twenties before I stopped. I was in my twenties before I stopped doing backyard wrestling. Um, <clears throat> but I was working out at, uh, at college at 
Kent uh, Stark, the Stark campus. And uh, <clears throat> she just randomly came up to me as I was working out and she came up to me. And she's like, have you ever thought about being a pro wrestler? And I, I kind of looked at her. And I was like, I was like, do you know me or something? And she's like, she's like no, she's like, I'm part of a, a group down in Coshocton, Ohio. And it's, uh, you know, independent wrestling organization is called Ohio Championship Wrestling, OCW. And uh, she's like, you should come down. You got a good look and, you, you know, you, you look like, like you're be athletic and all that stuff. And uh, she uh, <clears throat> basically gave me the info and I, I went down a week later and checked it out. So okay. it was, I thought someone was ribbing me or like, <laughs> playing a joke on me at the time. I didn't even know what ribbon means, but. So, Robbie, um, you signed up to train with Jeff and, uh, you know, you did all of your training there. What was the best part of being at Jeff Cannon's camp? Uh, honestly, just a place to go to every week uh, and the knowledge Jeff had and the <clears throat> how he instilled the old school but was open to new things, too. Like, he, he uh, you know, he watched current wrestling that was on at the time. And he knew how to do everything, not saying that he could do everything because Jeff is a big guy, but he knew how to do it. And he kind of instilled that in me. And that's, uh, I might be jumping ahead here, but that's what I've instilled in the, the Spine Buster U training facility now. Like I can pick out and see and know how to do just about any move um, or placement. Not that I can do it anymore. I'm not as agile as I used to be, but uh, you know, that's something that I've learned from Jeff and, you know, we made it, uh, he made his place available, you know, I think, uh, at least three times a week in the beginning. And then it was, it went down to two times a week, you know, mm -hmm. as I continued my training, you know, I, but I went for years, I went mm -hmm. for a good three, four years just to practice and, um, get better at the craft per se. So it was, gotcha. it was an old, uh, always a place to go and always a welcoming place to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of good guys came through there, and uh, <laughs> a lot of great memories in that small little gym too. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, I got you most definitely. Yeah, so I don't. I was never a part of the OCW group. I was out of wrestling at that time, but I mean, like just me even being out of it, I heard stories of like the family atmosphere and now it was like it was a special group and then I started coming back into wrestling and like going to shows and hanging out again and you could just tell like the old o OCW group was just like a special special group of family it, it was a really cool feeling to go in there and just be a fan of that promotion not even be a part of it for sure yeah it was uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of you know I still can remember pretty much everybody that came through there and their names and, you know, how they looked at Jeff and how they respected Jeff. And he just had a good way of doing things for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Well, one, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, which I mean, I know some of the answer, but I just like to, your input on it. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that you became well known for um, was the tag team with uh, hot commodity, Matt Mason, uh, the supernovas, high def supernovas. And uh, there was at one time you guys were tag team champions for like what four or five different promotions at the same time or something like that. Uh, that's a little exaggerating. I think we, <laughs> we were we were champions of three different promotions. It was o OCW, uh, War Wrestling, um, and Cleveland All Pro Wrestling at the same time. And all the promoters trusted us enough to like take the belts to all the different shows, and that was kind of our gimmick there for a while. Yeah. That we were champions of all of Ohio and, you know, the top companies in, in the, in the state at the time. So yeah, we made it, we made a pretty good little name for ourselves, you know, even if it was, you know, on the Ohio scene, it was still a cool time for sure. Who uh, were some of the, uh, who were some of the, the toughest opponents you had during that time frame? Cause I, I can remember some matches that were well to steal Jim Ross's uh, moniker, uh, slobber knockers there. So what were some <laughs> of the toughest or who were some of the toughest that you guys faced? Oh man, we had, we had feuds with, uh, you know, all the top tag teams around at that time. It was the first one. When you say slobber knocker, I, I think of faith in nothing. Yes. That's the one I was thinking of too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and, uh, crap. it's Ricky Shane page now, but I can't remember his name on Vince nothing. And, 
Christian faith. Christian faith. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 They were, they were uh, great in the ring at, you know, when we were wrestling them as a tag team, I was, you know, uh, I was kind of younger to the scene and I don't know how some of these guys, how long some of these guys have been in it, but I was blessed with a, a tag partner in Matt Mason and him being well respected around the area that, uh, you know, nobody tried to take advantage of me because I was Matt's partner and stuff like that. Not saying that those guys would, but I didn't have to worry, you know, when I was in the ring because that can be, you know, something to worry about when you're new to the business, you know, cause you've heard horror stories and stuff like that. But other teams uh, <clears throat> that we had good feuds with that were intense were the Irish airborne, uh, sure. Jake and Dan, um, and they're, you know, they're doing great for themselves. Now they're on, I think, I believe impact, right. They're on impact wrestling and uh, uh, the clash, Ernie balls, and uh, Brian Bender. Those guys were good. And then we, uh, who else? We'll see. You, had a, you had a run oh. with the nightmares, the mass nightmares. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a small run. <laughs> yeah, we had that. Um, who were they? Do you, know, do you remember who they were? <laughs> <laughs> well done. We're the mass men. <laughs> No, I never saw them without their masks on, so I don't know. I mean, they showered with their masks on. They ate with their masks on. I don't know who they are. No idea. No idea. No clue. <laughs> they, they, they were John Orlando and Donnie Hoover. No idea. <laughs> I, you know, they that looks familiar. Uh, rings a bell now. It, it all makes sense. <laughs> Well, Robbie, let me ask you this. Uh, who did you, uh, growing up watching wrestling, um, did you watch WWF more than any other promotion? Or who were some of your idols when you were when you were growing up? I was a, mainly a WWF fan, for okay. sure. Um, but I did occasionally watch WCW. Um, what is it, 605 on TBS? Mm -hmm. 605. I did watch that show. Um, I didn't really know the characters and everybody, you know, the personas as well as I did the WWF, but that's, I think that was just because I didn't have cable all the time growing up. Like there were times where we had cable and then other times where we didn't. So, sure. mm -hmm. uh, I believe WWF was more available. Um, and that's a lot of, like a lot of what my friends watched growing up, uh, all the guys that I grew up with on my street. Um, but some of my idols, I mean, I was a Hulk Hogan fan. I, you know, I was, I was hook, hooked in by the, the red and the yellow and the saying in your, saying your prayers, training, eating your vitamins, right, believe right. in yourself, all the demandments and commandments of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but looking back now, I, I really enjoyed, you know, watching the Macho Man. Okay. And he's one of my, you know, uh, influences now for sure. Uh, you know, on the WCW side, I was, I, I was like, you know, Sting, he was, you know, he was the man in WCW when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, I, I, I shocked the last time I did a podcast with John, actually, I, uh, mm -hmm. I shocked him and I, I told him that I always liked and enjoyed the, uh, the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. Okay. He was one of those that I, I really liked watching. I liked I him that. as a metal champion and stuff like that. Okay. So. That was a kind of a lesser known fact about me that I who I enjoyed watching. Sure. Well, you, you've got to get influences from a lot of different wrestlers. I mean, uh, Sting was one of my favorites uh, growing up, and uh, all the way into his retirement. Um, but uh, I was I was down south. I was in Florida, Georgia area. So yeah, WCW was my <clears throat> my my thing. Um, right. But WWF, you know, it was there when I wasn't watching WCW. So I understand where you're going with uh, Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, things like that. British mm -hmm. Bulldog. I love to watch the British Bulldogs yeah. uh, when I when I did. Um, so it, it's interesting to, to hear a different take because as we've done this show, I've heard, you know, WCW people. I've heard WWF people. I've heard Impact people. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's just it's good to hear the, the differences and and 
I'd just like to hear what our guests enjoyed and, and followed. Sure. Yeah. I, I definitely enjoyed the, uh, the, um, the neon beach buzz cut sting more than the, uh, the newer sting, the pro sting. I was much more of a fan of that era of sting than any other. Sure. Sure. <clears throat> So can we talk a little bit about your athletic background um, before you got into uh, to wrestling? If I remember correctly, you were a football player in high school, correct? Yes. I, uh, in high school, I did uh, football, basketball, and track. Uh, and then growing up, I did pretty much every sport, baseball, soccer, football, um, all, the, all, you know, all the normal. I mean, I don't say normal sports, but all the you know, pretty typical sports a, a mm -hmm. kid can do. I did them. How do you think that helped you when it came time to train with Jeff and, and oh, your business? Immensely. If you have an athletic background, um, no, I shouldn't say that about everybody, but uh, if you have an athletic background, it, it can help. It, it, it will help. It, it does help. Uh, you know, you just have to be limber. Uh, you, you know, if you're strong, um, flexible, all that kind of good stuff. If you have any kind of athletic background, it definitely helps with uh, with being a pro wrestler and training for sure. Mm -hmm. with, do you, uh, as you now are helping to train the next generation of wrestlers at Spinebuster U, um, is that something that would be kind of a blue chip prospect? Is if somebody that came in that said, yeah, I played football or I played basketball for X amount of years, would that, uh, in your mind, would that give them an edge over somebody that didn't? Yeah, um, it, there's only been one kid that has had a background in some kind of sport or weightlifting ability that it was, he was a body guy, you know, that I've, that I've come across. He was just a body guy because the kid was really just uncoordinated, uh, but <laughs> he, has, he has a lot of potential. Okay. And he, I still, I, I, we're still in talks of him coming back, you know, and possibly training. Um, okay. cause he, he didn't make it. He actually hurt his back, uh, lifting. And then he hurt further injured it training, uh, at spine buster. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of potential in the world, but a lot of, one of the questions on our, um, uh, I don't know the form that we have, uh, just to kind of get a, a basic knowledge of the, the people that are applying for the school is, do you have what athletic background do you have? So that's one of the things that we look for for sure is some kind of, you know, athletic background of some sort. Sure. Sure. And I think, as you said, it, it helps. It's not a determining factor in your success or not, because it takes all different types of people to be in the wrestling business. Oh yeah, so, definitely. So, definitely. Um, Donnie or Jim, do you have uh, any questions there? Um, yeah. I wanted to touch on a little bit. I was actually going to like, I, like we said before the podcast started, I was going to play around and, and like, uh, you know, do a little fun stuff to get you guys going at each other, but I don't think I am because I like the way this interview is going. But I do want to, I do want to touch base on. Well, uh, me and Johnny O never see nine to eye, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you got you was a, <laughs> He knows how to push the buttons. Uh, but uh, you were you were a baby face in it for a long time, and everybody loved you. And then it was just like all of a sudden you turned. I believe it was on on Matt Matt mm -hmm. Mason and. Uh, and turned heel and went went down the the wrong path, as John says. Uh, and what what do you feel like you enjoy more? Do you like being the good guy, like the Stings and the Hogans, or do you like leaning more toward the four horsemen dark side type of stuff? Uh, man, I, I I must say that it it is uh, different entities, you know, one side and to to the other. Uh, when I turned heel, when I turned on Matt Mason, I I got the cops called on me at war. Uh, they really thought it was real because I, I slammed Jamie, his wife and manager at, at you know, I, I gave her the starstruck in my, my finishing maneuver and they called the cops on, you know, woman abuse or whatever. I don't know what they said. <laughs> Tom came back. He's like, you just got the cop cut on you. You were going to call you Mr. 911. You know? <laughs> it was a pretty cool moment. So I know I did my job. Um, right. I loved to answer your question, Donnie. I, I loved being, a good guy and I never saw myself as a, a bad guy until I got the taste of it and now that's what I enjoy I enjoy more mm -hmm. but I do love you know 
interacting with the fans and being out there um, and, you know, kissing babies and signing autographs and all that stuff. I do love that, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like getting the crowd riled up. Uh, I would say if I had to pick one or the other, it would be heel for sure. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask real quick, Robbie, didn't you, if I may real quick, early on, didn't you work heel a little bit with Jeff? On a cert, on a couple of shows for like Fulton and those guys down in Southern Ohio, or no? Am I mistaken? On that? No, I was. Bobby always wanted me as the. So Jeff uh, was the heel then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The baby, the baby face. You know the grade eight baby face. <laughs> you know, <laughs> young talent. I I didn't have a beard or anything, and I was. I think you guys, you and uh, Adam, got on me because the girl I was dating at the time wanted me to grow a beard, and I grew a beard. And your guys are like, baby faces don't have beards? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember saying that. Oh, wait, I, think it, I think it might have been Adam. It might have not have been you. Okay, I was going to say, I don't remember making that comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, girlfriend I, likes. I got to say, Robbie, uh, you know, I, I'm the new kid on the block here when it comes to new Ohio wrestling. Um, but uh, at the Arnold last year, uh, yes. when, when you were wrestling Onyx, and and Arnold Schwarzenegger came out and got involved. Um, I mean, I know you were the heel, and and we played it up and everything. But how did how was how did that feel for you? I mean, have Arnold involved in all that? Let's just say this: I still hate that guy. <laughs> not talking about Onyx, Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you're watching, this one's for you. No. <laughs> uh, when that moment happened, uh, I I. I I tell this story a lot because everyone asks me about it. I, I don't know how long we got, but I'll, I'll try to make this short and sweet. As long as you want. Right. Okay. Uh, so story was, I know I'm kind of going, you know, breaking kayfabe here, but we were, we were told to, and we can edit out whatever you guys want to do, but we, uh, oh, you're good. Okay. So we were backstage and, uh, you know, we were kind of in, in the, dark about if he was going to show up when he was going to show up uh you knew that his people had put the word into him about wrestling but mm -hmm. and i this is the way i remember it onyx might tell it differently but uh we were both you know i had a, a place to be later on uh, you know probably like seven o'clock up up north because i live two hours north of columbus and uh, so we were trying to get you, Donnie, to let us go on. And you were like, oh, just wait. He's going to show up. He, you know, you wanted him for our match, which mm -hmm. was and, like, I'm so appreciative of that. And it, it was just like lady luck that happened because he, we weren't sure if he was going to show up, if he was even going to come over to the wrestling. And we weren't 100% sure, but we knew the bug was in his ear about wrestling. At least that's what we were told. Right. And, uh, so... I think I, I went out to the ring first and Donnie, uh, he, you come, you came running up to me as I was going up the steps and you're like, he's in the building. And I was like, I was calm still. I was like, I was like, okay, <laughs> he's going to do his, he's going to do his meet and greet. He's going to go all these different places and this and that. And Onyx and I had about, you know, 15, 20 minute match uh, mm -hmm. to work with. And we probably had about a 12 to 15 minute match planned because <laughs> mm -hmm. he had to be somewhere i think he had another show that night and i had to be somewhere for a, a prior commitment like later that night so we wanted to get out of there and uh and we had talked you into just if arnold showed up that onyx would come back out and get the belt presented to him because he he was able to stay a little longer than i was mm -hmm. and uh but we were i was walking out to the ring and i was going up the steps and uh you came up running to me and uh like he's in the building I was like okay all right we're all right we got you know we got a good little match plan it should work out fine and then about six and a half minutes in I just see this sea of people coming towards me I had <laughs> I was on top of on I had him down I don't know how I did that that was you know pure luck but uh, <laughs> I don't know how I got Onyx now he's a big man uh but I uh, got him down and I just like went to the crowd to like do my, my thing, you know, taunt the crowd, the show. And uh, I just see like this corner of or this crowd, huge crowd of people swarming, like coming towards the ring. And I didn't even get the show out. I just like stopped and I looked and I, I 
I don't know what happened. Like <laughs> I'm freaking out inside, but I stayed in character and I just went to uh, Arnold and I was like, yeah, baby, you like that? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think he thought I was the good guy. Because uh, he started like <laughs> clapping and uh, fearing for me. And then I just, I tried to make it known to him that I was, uh, you know, I was trying to taunt him and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I, saw him, I follow him actually on Snapchat and Instagram and social yeah. media and all that stuff. So when he pulled out his phone and was doing that, I knew exactly what he was doing. He was, he was getting a Snapchat of the, the, the match. Mm -hmm. And so I just hammed it up and I, I think I flexed at him again and yeah. uh, taunted him again. And uh, then I went back over to Onyx. I was like, we got to go home. At this point, Onyx was still down. I must have blasted him a good one because he had no idea. <laughs> he had no idea Arnold was even there. <laughs> he was like, "Why do we have to go home?" I was like, "Arnold's ringside." He's like, "What?" And so, uh, you know, I got him in the corner. We we actually botched the the end spot, and that was my fault because I was I was shaking, nervous, but uh, I was trying to stay as cool as I could be. Uh, but then we fixed it, and thankfully, Arnold went to hit him his self like he got a picture of his face so he didn't see the botch on his snapchat mm -hmm. thank god <laughs> 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 then we, we did the finish and then the one two three and i tried to stay down thinking he was gonna get in the ring because i thought you know he was mm -hmm. savvy on the whole situation or whatever and uh he never he he didn't get in so i i started yelling at him from the mat and i was like you cost me the match you cost me from the match and so I turned my back and I, I turned around and I, I gave Onyx like a signal to hit me again. And he punched me down. I rolled out next to Arnold. And uh, I don't even know if you know this, Donnie, but I said, uh, I, I looked at Arnold because I know he was, he's been around wrestling before. I said, mm -hmm. I was like, push me down, push me down. And he just goes, oh, ho, 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 and laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> So I kind of went back towards the ring and then thankfully he put his hand on my back mm -hmm. and kind of rolled me in right. and I went with it and I like did a, I think I did a spin and turned around and Onyx picked me up and slammed me again. And then I stayed down cause I was wanting, you know, Arnold to get in the ring, give the belt to Onyx. And then I stayed down, I think for about a minute. And then I looked up and Arnold was gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I was standing like right behind him. And because uh, we were, I was trying to get him to present the belt, right. but uh, he's hard to control pretty much. And yeah. I, but yeah, I did see when you rolled out, which uh, kudos to you on on that. I wanted to give you that because none of that was planned. That no, was, no. That oh, was, it was all awesome. my. So the way you incorporated involving him and rolling out to him, because I thought when you rolled out, I, I seen what you did, but I thought you said roll me back in, and then yeah. when you started to go back in, he shoved you back in. Yeah, I was going to bump on the ground for him if he would have gave me a shove. Yeah. That, I was out of the ring, out of the picture, and he could could have got in. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I thought that was brilliant how you uh, incorporated him and got him involved. And uh, Yeah, but as soon as Onyx slammed you and he gave the thumbs up, he was just like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> and, like, the whole crowd <laughs> left. But, uh, yeah, like, ironically, yeah, because I remember telling you he was coming. And then when Onyx was walking to the ring, I just kind of walked past him like I was going back toward the locker room. Mm -hmm. And I just said, he's here. And he was like, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, yeah, but I guess that he was supposed to be at the main stage to do a judging. Okay. And they weren't done yet. And there was still like 15 minutes to go before they were done, the talent contest or whatever was going on. So, he, like I said, he just does what he wants. He doesn't listen to anybody. So, yeah. I, guess, I guess he just walked off and leave the lady that runs the Kids and Teens Expo said she kind of like walked him toward our way, but she didn't lead him or say anything. And then um, I guess when he saw us over there, he just like made a beeline right to it. And so, funny. I mean, it, it was like, you know, perfect timing. It could have been timed out or planned any better. Yeah, it was great. I think it went over really well mm -hmm. for being all, like you said, all on the fly. And I, you know, I tried yeah. to stay professional and everything like that. Oh, so. yeah. No, I he thought it turned out great. Yeah, and he seemed to enjoy, like I said, the Snapchat. You could tell he was having a good time and all the other stuff. So I still have the video on it, and then everyone cracks up with, with his laugh. He's like, this is the professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> First time ever of professional wrestling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. in so. spite of that, you know, you didn't win the Arnold Kids World's, I, I don't remember, 
remember there you the go name watching the things again come on <laughs> i don't remember the name of the title anymore it's just so long. i don't remember <laughs> but let's move ahead to the ohio state fair and you know matt taylor held the belt for what 24 hours mm-hmm. yeah and then you captured the new ohio wrestling championship uh that's all due to my uh fantastic wonderful manager ripper blackheart he knows where to put his guys at the right place at the right time like i say i didn't have nothing to do with the (laughs) other three guys in your group did it (laughs) uh yeah no um in all serious seriousness uh the the ohio state fair that was the first time i ever got to wrestle at that fair and again i want to thank donnie and uh and props to new ohio wrestling uh, for putting me in such a, a big match uh, on a on a big stage because regardless of you know how many people were there if it was a thousand if it was a couple hundred if it was you know whatever uh, to say that I won a championship at the Ohio State Fair and that can go down in the history books of you know the wrestle nerds of of Ohio or the wrestle nerds of the of the world that Robbie Starr won the new Ohio wrestling championship at the Ohio State Fair that's one of the biggest honors and biggest accomplishments of my career for sure and it's a belt that I I wanted to win because when I love a promotion um, I I really want to be the guy for that promotion and uh, you know be the face and work hard for that promotion because uh, you're you're putting the trust in me to bring in people to see our events, and uh, that means a lot to me. So, uh, not to get sappy or anything, because I don't oh, no. really like you, Donnie. But oh yeah, I understand. <laughs> feelings, feelings mutual. <laughs> no, I, I I thank you uh, for putting me in that situation. I was able to get the victory over Matt Taylor, who is uh, you know has been a thorn in my side in every promotion that I've wrestled for, but. He's a great opponent and a, a great dude to be in the ring with, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I say it was a great match. And uh, <clears throat> I say even though you uh, always try to do underhanded tactics and all this stuff and you're the show Robbie Star, you still, yeah. no matter how mean and nasty you are to people, you still seem to draw the fans in to cheer for you, <laughs> which is something I still haven't figured out. Like you got the that family in the front row. They oh, yeah. bring their T-shirts well, and spines. And <laughs> well, the only smart people in, that come to your shows. <laughs> so, so, so how many boas do you go through uh you know what i've given a few away um to blythe that one little girl that loves yep. me at her show i gave one away to her uh but i have a lot of the ones that i've started with they don't smell very well but i still have <laughs> you know, I, I take pretty good care of them so you know you you know if i've been in a locker room though they're all over the place jimmy shane hates that <laughs> you know can can I, that was going to be my next question since you mentioned jimmy shane i think um robbie one of the accolades that maybe some people don't realize is in your resume so to speak was that you kind of took jimmy under your under his, under your wing yep. you know especially in his early years and really helped him to develop that character and, and not saying jimmy's not a talented dude because he is but i think you know, he has a any better? No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you know. I think and Donnie, you no, can. He's, back. He, he's good. He's a great dude. I think yeah, and I think Donnie, you you can back me up on this. You need that person to take you under the wing sometimes and show them. Oh, yeah. You know, sure. this is how things are done in that. So, I mean, Robbie, do you do you feel like that is a accolade that you um, deserve for helping Jimmy out, or is it just what you were taught to do and you're kind of repaying it? Uh. The latter, I think, uh, okay. what I was taught to do. Um, yeah, I I never even really thought about it until you just brought it up that I, you know, helped Jimmy, you know, I guess give the rub to him a, a little bit. Um, I never really thought of it that way until you just pointed it out, John. Um, but yeah, uh, Jimmy's been great. He's he's been a sponge and he's gone his own way and made it made a name for himself on his own. You know, yeah. he's really yeah. gone a lot of places and done a lot of things. I know, I know that's a term that we use a lot in the wrestling <clears throat> business and then wrestling promos, but 
you know, he's gone state to state. He's gone to different promotions on his own. He's traveled the roads. Um, he's, he's absorbed uh, knowledge from Jeff, from Matt Taylor, from myself, from Matt Mason, from Joey, one of his best friends, Joey Rogers, um, that started a little bit before him, I think about a year before him. Mm -hmm. um, and then from Sherman Tank and, you know, guys that have been around the business for a while and he, he knows what he's doing and he's, he's kind of the, the man behind the scenes at OCW now. So he's, uh, you know, making a, making a very good name for himself and still going strong. Mm -hmm. Still going strong. He's been in the business, what, eight years now, something yeah. like that. What was your, do you have a favorite memory of when you two were together? Like a favorite match or a favorite memory? Here, here is how we came up with the term winners. Okay. This one that when you, as soon as you said that, that's, this is the first thing that popped in my mind. We had both won our matches that night at OCW and we were both heels and Jimmy was brand new basically as a heel, maybe his third or fourth match. I don't know. He's a better historian than I am. <laughs> but uh, we were at the after party at BW3s in Newark. No. Uh, was it Newark? Was it Sport Zone in Coshocton? Zanesville. So okay. we, were at, we were at the after party in Zanesville at BW3s. Uh, and this uh, mom and daughter that came to all the shows were there, and they were trying to talk to us. And we were, we were staying away from all the boys – because we were the, you know, the newly biggest heels in the group, in the company. And we were trying to, you know, keep kayfabe as much as possible. And they were coming over here and trying to talk to us. And we had a couple of Bud Lights, I think, we were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and every anytime they said anything to us and they were waiting for our response, we would just yell real loud and toast one another one another winners we were the winners <laughs> that's the only thing we even gave them we didn't talk to them we didn't answer any of their questions we were just like celebrating the whole night anytime they said anything and then we <laughs> took that to the ring and incorporated it uh at, at, into our gimmick and then that nice. became a tag team name nice. and then it became our group in new ohio wrestling Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Gary say, I mean, it started out as something goofing off with you guys, but I thought it was friggin' hilarious, and yeah. liked, I liked it so much that I wanted to bring it to New Ohio, just so I could hear you guys just yell it. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> it was. It was us goofing off, mm -hmm. having fun, being jackasses, basically, and uh, <laughs> it, it grew into something big, and that's that's how a lot of a lot of things work in wrestling and work in entertainment. Mm -hmm. so, it was it was a happy mistake for sure. <laughs> happy, happy. Bob Ross. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you you've managed to stay injury free pretty much, you know. <laughs> hey, yes, no. Now, John, all right, you're already what? getting you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's uh, <laughs> I've been blessed with that. I I haven't had too many serious injuries. I think the most serious one was besides my head getting. Yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot about – I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you right now, that freaked me out. I'll just be honest. I think we've talked about it, but that freaked me out that night because, I, like, I was like, oh, man, that was – that looked horrible. Yeah. Uh, all the, the only camera angle that I have seen or heard was just – you saw me do the moonsault to the outside, and all you just heard was a big smack. Yeah. You couldn't see me hit. But then when the camera came over, you just saw the blood pour out of my head and it was all over the ground. Um, you know, it was an unfortunate incident. It was me trying to do too much at that time. Um, me not normally performing that maneuver to the outside. Um, the, the part that was my fault, I tried to go back over the post. Uh, I thought I could go farther than what I did. And at that time, I actually had a real pretty moonsault where I would go straight up, straight down. So I'm lucky I didn't even hit the post going down. Um, but I went, I tried to go over the post and they were just too far back. Um, so I don't blame them. Um, a lot of people did initially. It mm -hmm. was Cruz and uh, Todd Richards at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't blame them. I don't hold any grudges. It was a freak accident. And, uh, you know, it is it is what it is. Um just something that I've learned from 
and I learned to go to the side now if I ever want to do a moonsault to the outside of the ring, which I've only attempted twice since that, uh, since that, uh, that all happened from way back when. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I do really, admit, uh, though, you got one of the prettiest moonsaults out there, for sure. Uh, it, it, it was better when I was younger, but it's still <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only the only other injury that I've actually had, and I don't even know if any of you know this, I uh, Jimmy Shane ruptured my eardrum, and I couldn't hear for a good you know two weeks out of my I don't remember what ear it is now. I think it was my left ear, yeah, because he hit me with a right punch, so uh, popped me right on the ear and uh, ruptured my eardrum. Wow. Yeah, that was kind of scary. I freaked out in the back. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what was going on because I've been hitting the ear before, but my hearing always came back mid match and that it wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. And so I go to, you know, a specialist and everything. See yeah, that happened fun. to me once. That sucks. Yeah. It's no fun for sure. Yeah, going thing, back to Jimmy Shane real quick, since Orlando brought that to your attention about you taking him under your wing and stuff, I expect to hear a promo on that the next time you go at him on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're uh, we, we just kind of reconciled back in OCW. We're we're starting to not be together again, but we we have each other's backs more or less. There you go. In OCW, so it, it could be working out for you know for good for both promotions, New Ohio and OCW. Yeah, you know, for sure. I was going to say, uh, Robbie, uh, me, you know, again, me being the new kid in the business. You know, I've done announcing now for Donnie for about two years. Um, so feel free to harass the ring announcer next time you come in. <laughs> I'm used to it now, so okay, I, I'm not afraid of it. It's like, first, it's like, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or not. I even well, talked to... Uh, to be a ring announcer, you need to shave that beard. Yeah, you that's, that's, that's coming, that, it's coming off. It's coming off. The beard's Jim, coming off. Jim, I'll just give you some, some, some advice. Uh, be nimble, especially if Jock Sampson decides to throw a cowbell at you. You better pay attention because there were many times where that thing started. I'm like, oh, crap. I wasn't paying attention. You got to pay attention when he's coming to the ring. Otherwise, you're going to eat a cowbell for sure. Okay, well, I, 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 I'm not hungry for cowbell. Even, even if Christopher Walken says so. Uh, but, Robbie, um, what, do you, what do you have to say – for your next opponent for the NOW championship. Well, do we even know who it is? At the moment, no. No, okay. Well, whoever it is, if you're- well, Even if we did, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway, because that's just uh, how I am. Uh, exactly, I don't find out <laughs> the day of. Uh, yeah. For whoever you are, if you're worthy enough to even be in the ring with the show, uh, you better come ready, you better come equipped, and you better have Lady Luck on your side because the show, Robbie Starr, has got all the tools in the world to put you down and pin you under those lights, one, two, three. As a matter of fact, now I'm thinking about it, I think a, a Dark Star Matt Taylor rematch will probably be the of one of them. Yeah. Uh, of course, the and, of course, we'll have to work on keeping your, your friends away from the ringside there. <laughs> Listen, Donnie, that's expected. You, you can surprise me by booking Arnold Schwarzenegger against me. That's what I really want. Damn it. If he can do it, I'd do it. <laughs> and what advice do you have, Robbie, for somebody just getting into the business? Um, listen, 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 listen. Um, pay attention. Ears open, mouth shut. Be respectful. Um don't be afraid to ask questions, though, because uh, I think – I shouldn't say this for everybody, but I think that a lot of guys are willing to help you. Um, the old mentality of uh, not smartening you up, I think, has gone by the wayside. I think I, – I, with the state wrestling is in now, um, and it's getting better, but I believe, like – wrestling had to make a put a bad taste in people's mouths put a bad stain around the area just because it was it wasn't good it was untrained guys you know buying boots offline and somehow getting a ring and you know they were playing wrestler 
Um, if, if you go to a, a good, knowledgeable school, um, I'm going to plug Spine Buster because we're going to start reopening back up in January. At least that's the plan. Um, Cody Hawk School, uh, Mega School, uh, good, knowledgeable guys know the business. Uh, ask questions, go, train, get as much ring time as possible. Um, all of the above, just, just be a sponge is the main thing. Soak it all in. Study your craft. I could go on and on and on. I, I tell my guys all the time, um, you know, come with a with a move you want to learn, or, or come with a, a an idea for a character or a, or a promo, or something. Just try to e evolve and make yourself different. Um, a lot of a lot of good things that were instilled in me, I try to instill in the guys that I that I train or come across, you know, in a locker room or whatever. Okay. If they ask a question. Sure. The reason I ask that, Robbie, is because you need to be careful of my daughter. What? <laughs> she she is training with Cody Hawk right now. Okay. And she may be coming for you in that NOW title sometime. You know, I, I'm no Andy Kaufman, but I'm not afraid to whoop a woman's butt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if she it's, tries me, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, knock a, te a tooth out. So she's, she's about two months in with Cody now, um, and she's absolutely loving what she's doing. Well, she she picked a great school. Cody Hawk is top notch. She knows his craft. Um, I've been in the ring plenty of times with him, on the same side, on the opposing side, and uh, he knows his stuff for sure. Uh, she's kind of doing what I never got a chance to do. So I live vicariously through her. I was just going to say that. You're living vicariously through it. But that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Shave that beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to talk to my wife about that. She likes it. Yeah. Nice. Um, I was going to uh, – you already brought it up, but I was already going to bring up uh, Spine Buster University. Do you want to talk a little bit about that for yeah. the people out there? Uh, sure. Right now we are actually currently suspending training just because we don't have a, a, a sufficient facility. Uh, but I've been in talks with uh, Jeremy and Glenn, the general manager and the owner of OCW, and we have tentatively have a deal with the old gym that we were at, um, the second gym we were at in Akron. Um, and we had planned on advertising a new class starting in January. And Is so that back at that school that you guys were at? or No, it was gonna, it's going to be at the, the MMA gym. Uh, oh, okay. More okay. In Akron than in Portage Lakes. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to go back to that gym in Portage Lakes. That was perfect for shows and for the training facility. Mm -hmm. But we've kind of set up another deal with the the MMA gym that we were at. Uh, and it, you know, it, it it's it's not in the I it's not in a great part of town, but it's not in a bad part of town. If that makes sense, it's right. kind of like right on the outskirts. It's easy to get to, but I've heard horror stories of all kinds of you know, wrestling schools, the, you know, different areas and stuff like that. But this place isn't bad. Um, it's going it, to, it, it's, you know, well-equipped, uh, big enough space for us. Um, I don't know if they're going to do any deal with like the weights, but he's the, the owner of that gym has like weights and uh, cardio equipment and stuff like that, that we might be accessible to. Don't know all the details quite yet, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably planning on training again, being the head trainer. Uh, you know, all the guys affiliated with OCW that are qualified either don't have the time right now or are not committed to doing it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's something that I actually really found that I love to do is train guys. Um, and uh, I, I've got a lot of good prospects that are on the current roster and have made different appearances for different promotions. Yeah, and we've stuff. used we've used some of your guys' as, uh, students and uh, yeah. Jake Ely, Chuck the Truck Norris, and right. Uh, I, unfortunately, uh, Gino got, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't take credit for those guys. That Sherman Tank trained those three, mm -hmm. um, uh, including Grant Andrew, Andrews as well. Mm -hmm. Those were his four main guys that came out and you know were making a good name for themselves around Ohio and. Uh, uh, I appreciate you using them because they still come and train with me. Right. After, yeah. 
stepped away for a little bit. So I've taught him a thing or two, I, I would like to think. But, uh, you know, th those are Tink's guys for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, who, who should we keep an eye out that came uh, from your uh, training school, from your training you know, class, I should say? I want to name them all because they've all got equally okay. good um, but the, the one that comes to mind the most is, uh, Lord Thomas, the brute. Okay. He's a good boy. Uh, he's a scary individual. He's uh he's a monster in the ring. Um, he's probably, and I think all the other guys will attest to this, the most, um, advanced student that I've had. And then there's guys that have come later in, in, that come to mind. Um, Asher Knox, mm -hmm. uh, he's, a little up there in age, but he's got a great gimmick. He's a high roller from Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I'm very proud of him. Uh, other guys like Kenny Cash and Jared Knight and uh, Ray Stewart, those guys uh, all from the Akron area, uh, just great head, heads on their shoulders, are really, really starting to develop their characters. Um, I'm, I can't think, I, I don't hope I'm not missing anybody. Um, I guess I could take somewhat credit for Natalie May, one of our female competitors. Tank started with her, but she wasn't quite done with training. Um, she's doing really well having matches. She's our, the Ohio uh, Championship Wrestling Women's Champion at the moment. Um, shoot. Uh, Got to think. Edit this out because I'm taking a long time. I can't, <laughs> believe, I can't believe I'm getting my students. Uh, Hey, let's see. There's Matt. There's Kenny, <laughs> Jared, Ray, Tommy. Who am I forgetting? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get ripped for this because I'm forgetting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you're in charge. You're the boss. Yeah, now, <laughs> bring yourself more to me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's about it. If I if I uh, if I forget to mention somebody, put it in the notes. I forgot to mention it. <laughs> We're just going to say you did it on purpose. <laughs> that, that, I do everything on purpose. <laughs> so with all that being said, how can people find out more about Robbie Superstar? Well, I have all the, you know, the general social media. I have Twitter, uh, Robbie Star 117 uh, at Twitter at yahoo and then i'm the show robbie star on facebook that's my athlete page um my real last name i guess is galloway so i i have a personal page as rob galloway on facebook as well um i i will add fans but i i generally like to keep that um kind of personal but i have i've added fans in the past so any of those pages will work and now, is there any social media for Spine Buster? Yes, there is a Facebook page. That's our primary use of communication, Spine Buster University on Facebook. Um, and then Ohio Championship Wrestling has links to Spine Buster. They have a, uh, a Facebook page, an Instagram, and a Twitter. Uh, and all of those things are available to link you to the Spine Buster page. And we also have ocwrestling.net uh, which is not always up to date but it's it, it has some current stuff on there as well okay. and don't forget that currently Robbie is the new Ohio wrestling champion you better forget not forget it either <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donnie Johnny last things for Robbie no man, um, I, I got to say that this has been a real blast. Um, yes. It's been fun. Yeah, to walk back memory lane, so to speak, man. Um, it, it it really was a blast for me. Thank you, yeah. Rob, for coming on, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. I I really really enjoyed it. I, I I'm just tickled because he busted my chops about you know botching a couple of things during the show here. <laughs> uh, that just it makes me form makes me feel more. A part of this business so you know if i botched it <laughs> oh well i'll get over it yeah Wait well, you, ain't, you ain't no different from the rest if you mess something up we're gonna let you know about it <laughs> <laughs> so uh robbie thank you so much for being a part of wrestle horror 
Um, and just before we close out, throw out a couple of your horror movies. What do you like? Uh, you're going to put me on the spot like that? Uh, <laughs> Abby, what are And we're not talking about, about your and John's relationship either. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a tragedy. That's not a horror. That's more right. of a tragedy, Donnie. Looking at the three of you has been pretty scary all night. Uh, <laughs> I'll feed something to you here. How about uh, Halloween? Uh, yeah. Friday yeah. the 13th. Yeah. What, Abby, what are the, some of the horror movies I like? <laughs> Your wife knows, but you don't. New fan. I'm a new fan. Okay. Abby, what, where did she go? <laughs> okay, so so we'll, we'll just, just bring her in. We'll have him scoot over, and we'll sit right. her down and talk horror. Right. Films. Oh, <laughs> we, we had to throw a little more horror in there. It's oh. also horror. Exorcism of Emily Rose. That one's a great one. Good movie. Good yes. movie. Okay. Uh, the Conjuring. Yes. I was scared to death to go to bed that night. To to bed. <laughs> Seriously. I know. Anything I've... Based on like a true events. Right. That's what that's what intrigues me. That's what I get involved with. So okay. good ones for you there. Okay, perfect. Uh, Robbie, again, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us on Wrestle Horror. It's been awesome. We can't wait to see you again uh, at the Arnold, hopefully. Yes, I will be there. Okay. Uh, and uh, hopefully New Ohio Wrestling, you've got a belt to defend sometime. I mean, so Yeah. Apparently uh, I'm gonna Defended 15 times at the Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the fair, too. You got four times at the fair if you can make it through. Right. You know what? Uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, uh, for John and Donnie, I'm Meat Hook Jim, along with Robbie Starr, Rob Galloway, however you want to know him. Thank you so much for being on Wrestle Horror, and we will catch you on the next show. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, facebook.com backslash WrestleHorror, Instagram at WrestleHorror, Twitter at WrestleHorror, on our YouTube channel, the WrestleHorror channel. Also, you can find us at www.wrestlehorror.com.